Following the end of the Second World War, the newly formed U.S. Department of Defense was in some controversy after their first supercarrier, USS United States CVA-58, was cancelled after her keel was laid. Following this, the shipyard would be looking to build another ship and end up settling on building an ocean liner which carried the same name, United States. Her keel would be laid on the 8th of February 1950 and would take about a year to complete and launch on the 23rd of June 1951. After being fitted out, the SS United States would begin her career. On July 3, 1952, the SS United States would begin her maiden voyage. This voyage would take around four days to complete. The United States would break the eastbound transatlantic speed record, which was held by the Cunard Line ship RMS Queen Mary for the past 14 years. Being more than 10 hours ahead of the previous records, the United States would be able to reach a top speed of 40 Point ninety six miles an hour, winning her the Blue Ribbon. On her return voyage, the United States would also break the westbound transatlantic speed record, which was also held by the Queen Mary. Following her maiden voyage, the SS United States would be very popular for transatlantic travel, sailing between New York, Southampton, and La Havre with the additional call at Bremerhaven. The, the United States would attract frequent and repeat celebrity passengers such as Marilyn Monroe, Judy Garland, Cary Grant, Walt Disney, and Duke Ellington. Walt Disney would even feature the ship in the 1962 film Bon Voyage. Overall, the SS United States would prove to be the most popular liner in the North Atlantic. As the ship had been such a success, the United States line would begin drafting plans to make a running mate for the ship, much like what had been done for Cunard's Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth. Eventually, this idea would form into the SS President Washington, a superliner with very similar design to the SS United States. Unfortunately, this idea had failed to fruition as Congress would not allocate any funds to the project. For the first time ever in 1957, piston-powered aircraft had carried more passengers across the Atlantic than ocean liners. This would be the start of the end for ocean liners, as in the following years, aircraft would continue to evolve and become faster than ocean liners, making transatlantic crossing only just a few hours instead of, of a couple days. Throughout the 1960s, the liner's reputation was permanently altered during strikes by the masters, mates, and pilots' union. These strikes would force the cancellation of voyages and the reassignment of passengers meaning a ticket would no longer guarantee a trip aboard. Due to this and the competition from airlines, 
Customers would soon disappear, and the USL would refuse to release their yearly passenger count in 1960, due to how low it had become. By 1961, conditions had not improved. For the first time, a voyage was cancelled as only 350 people had bought tickets. To try and improve the sales of tickets, the USL would make the United States into a cruise ship, and do vacations from New York and Dock and Nassau, St. Thomas, Trinidad, uh, Crystal Bay. Now, by 1968, the Atlantic liner routes were dying, with only the United States, France, and Queen Elizabeth conducting sailings. To help the U.S. stand out, the USL would begin offering longer voyages to more distant ports in Europe, Africa, and South America. This would show her a temporary rise in fame again, until later in 1968, the USL would be bought out. Now, the US would be owned by Walter Kidd & Co, who believes the age of ocean liners had passed. After her final voyage, she would sail to Newport News for a scheduled annual overhaul. While there, the USL would announce a surprise decision to withdraw her from service. On November 11th, everything in the ship would be sealed up and left behind. In June 1970, the ship would be relocated across the James River to the Newfork Internation Terminal in Norfolk, Norfolk, Virginia. In 1973, the USL would transfer ownership of the vessel to the United States Mar Maritime Administration. In 1980, the ship would be sold for $7 million to a group by a Seattle developer, Richard H. Hadley, who hoped to revitalize the liner into a floating condominium. In November 1997, the SS United States would be purchased by Edward Cantor for $6 million. Two years later, the SS United States Foundation and Conservancy would succeed in having the ship placed on the National Register of Historic Places. Throughout the years of Philly, the SS United States would go through a lot of events. These events are as follows. Norwegian cruise lines, 2003 to 2009, potential scrapping, 2009 to 2010, Conservation 2010 to 2015, Crystal Cruises 2016 to 2018, RXR Realty beginning of 2018, Pure 82 rent increase 2021 to 2024, and finally eviction in 2024. On 30th of August 2024, Florida's Okasa County announced that they plan to buy the ship and sink her as the world's largest artificial reef off Destin Fort Walton Beach at a cost of one million dollars. The county had previously sunk the aircraft carrier USS Orensky, which was part of a similar plan. 